Hi everybody! Welcome to Feast at Home. Do we have any first timers watching us right now? If this is your first time to join us, hello to you! We'd like to invite you to a welcome party that is happening right after this session. All you have to do is to look for the Zoom link that is right there pinned in the comments so that you can join our gathering. We promise you guys it's gonna be quick and fun. So to all our first timers, see you there! Have you guys noticed that it's only a few more days to go before the Feast Conference 2020? Boom! Save those dates guys, November 20, 21, and 22 cause we're gonna gather as one family for the biggest Catholic inspirational event of the year. Could you imagine? Three days of new learnings, new discoveries, and new beginnings in the new normal right at the comfort of your home. Get your tickets online via feastconference.com. There are three ticket types available, 300 pesos for our youth, 995 for regular access, and 1,995 for premium access, which comes with a complimentary shirt. So what are you guys waiting for? Register now and get ready to be blessed. Feast Conference. See you there! Feastcon 2020, in the beginning. When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And you know what? The Gospel of John says that, brings us back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And then he says the word was made flesh. And then he talks about Jesus. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding, opening your eyes that God, the one who created all this, and that Jesus, who is the Word made flesh, they've not stopped creating new things. God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. Hey, we're gonna have brand new workshops and brand new classes and fellowships. God's gonna speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's gonna do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning.
we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story. We're going to sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. Dear friends, welcome back to Feast at Home. We are so blessed that you can come and join us once again this Sunday. And if you are new here, hello, we would love to know more about you. So why don't you comment down below so the rest of our Feast family can come and welcome you. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, even before this pandemic began, we already had a lot of things going on in our lives. And when COVID hit, it's like double the fear, double the anxiety, and double the worry. And those three words, my dear brothers and sisters, are the favorite weapons of the enemy to pull us down. But today, we are here to remind you, and even ourselves, that no matter how big the storms in our lives are, nothing, none of those can possibly be bigger than our God. So now I invite you, everyone, let us come together in worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise be your name. We walk in the shadows, though we are unsure of tomorrow, and though our challenges seem bigger than us, we will shift our focus, not on the darkness that envelops us, but on your light that cannot be dimmed, not on the uncertainty of tomorrow, but on the assurance that you will never forsake us. We will focus not on the battle that's bigger than us, but onto you who will fight our battle for us. Dear brothers and sisters, no one is too messed up. No one is out of second chances with God. We face this battle not to fight, but to witness God's deliverance in our lives.
Hi guys, welcome to Feast at Home. We are grateful and glad that you are joining us today. In fact, why don't you share with us on the comments below what you are grateful for this past week. And together, let's celebrate with joy the good and great things God is doing in our lives. Yes? Come on, come on. Comment them below and let us know, let us know, let us know. Now, recently, um, I saw this movie starring Tom Hanks. Maybe you know the guy, right? And the movie was entitled Greyhound. The movie is based on the 1955 novel um, The Good Shepherd by C.S. Forrester. And the plot of the film follows a commander of the U.S. Navy, played by Tom Hanks, on his first wartime assignment in, uh, in command of a multinational escort group defending a merchant ship convoy under the attack by German submarines. And this happened in early 1942. And this was during the Battle of the Atlantic, only months after the U.S. officially entered World War II. And as I was watching it, for me, it was really a, a great movie about leadership. But one memorable part of the movie for me was whenever the German submarines would try to contact the commander on his ship through radio. And through this radio message, the Germans would try to scare them, threaten them, and ask them to surrender and give up. Now, this radio message would normally be heard throughout the PA system on their ship. But every time the voice of the German commander in the submarine would begin to incite fear, Ernest Krauss, the commander played by Tom Hanks, would ask the radio to be muted, to be muted right away, to be turned off. Friends, Maybe recently, because of this crisis we are all facing, maybe the devil has been trying to oppress you, stress you, or make you even feel less about yourself and what God can do through you. Now, I just want to share, share with you this. The reason I found um, this scene so powerful was because I believe this is what we ought to do. This is what we ought to do whenever the devil tries to deceive us, discourage us, or cause us dread and distress. In other words, we need to mute the devil, all right? We need to mute the devil. We need to shut him out. I mean, we can't let him speak a word to us because they are all lies. They are all lies out to, out to take us out, to take us out of our focus, to take us out of our confidence, to take, of, take us out of our purpose in Christ. I, I, I remember this verse in John chapter 8, verse 44. I'll, lead, I'll read it from their message version. Jesus is speaking. And he says, he, which, 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 which means that he's pertaining to the devil, he, the devil, was a killer from the very start. He couldn't stand the truth because there wasn't a shed of truth in him. When the liar speaks, he makes it up out his lying nature. He makes it up out of his lying nature and fills the world with lies. Friends, mute the devil. Turn him off, all right? And turn up the volume of the voice of truth, rather, in your life. And that is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is telling you today and every day, I am with you, I am for you, so take heart. Take heart in this season, for I have overcome. Then from that truth, from that truth in faith, declare a battle cry of victory over your life. Just like the song we just sung, declare a battle cry of victory over your problems, over your struggles, and over evil. And you can declare that with faith because you are on the winning side with Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you believe that today, let's pray our favorite prayer in the feast. Let's come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we pray. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. 
the day I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Together, let's honor God's word as we sing. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Today, all right, our message today um, is, of course, we're still in the Matthew series. So why don't you turn with me to Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 and 38. Sorry, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 to 8. So we're at the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. And Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 to 8. And again, we will continue our deep dive on our series on Matthew. But before we um, go deep, let's just take somehow a quick eagle's view on the ground we've covered thus far. All right. You see... After we studied the inauguration of the kingdom, which is in chapter 1 to 4, Jesus did three, all right, three things. First, he described the kingdom in the Sermon on the Mount, which happened in chapters 5 to 7. Second, he displayed the kingdom through nine miracles. And that's what we just recently discussed in um, chapters 8 and to 9. And then third, he delegated the kingdom to his apostles. And that's in chapter 10. So now we are already in talk nine of this series, Miracles and More. And the title of our message today is this Make Me Whole. Make Me Whole. And you're probably wondering, then, then you're probably wondering, like many people, how then does one achieve wholeness? And a lot of people, all right, think it's all about self love, all right? In fact, these days, um, a lot of people talk about self-love or self-care in books, in seminars, in blogs, and rightly so, because this is very important. I mean, we preach this even in the feast. But let me tell you this. Self-love is only step one. All right? The truth is self-love can never satisfy you, and that may shock you, all right? Because if it's only about self-love, you'll never be whole. Real wholeness, get this, real wholeness means loving others by self-sacrifice. Real wholeness means loving others by self-sacrifice. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So just to give you some context um, of where we are uh, in Matthew chapter 9, at the very end, all right? At this point, um, again, we're in the latter part of Matthew, Matthew 9, and Jesus has just finished performing a series of miracles. And that's what we've been talking about in the past how many weeks. But let me just tell you, this was no ego trip. All right? Jesus didn't do that to show off himself, all right? Or to show off his powers. There's no ego trip there. Jesus was rather creating his version of the Avengers. All right? And that's what we're about to see here. And when I, when I somehow was reading this, this somehow quickly reminded me of that scene in, I, I don't know if it's Iron Man 2 or Iron Man 3, when Nick Fury was talking to Tony Stark about um, bringing together a band of superheroes called the Avengers Initiative. I mean, I'm sure you remember that because that's where it all branched out and started, right? Now, in this passage we're about to go through, Jesus was um, doing what Nick Fury was doing in that scene because Jesus had no interest in being the only superhero in the universe where everyone looks up at him and runs to him when they need rescuing. Rather, Jesus was raising up a team of kingdom superheroes. And guess what? You're one of them. I'm one of them. We're all part of that team. Why? Because God's love flows through you. God's love flows through you. And that's our one big message today. And we'll talk more about that as we move along. But today I want us, or I want you with me, to make seven, all right? Seven faith declarations. 
And we're going to talk about that throughout this message. So here's the first one. Here's the first, first faith declaration. I'm a shepherd. I'm a shepherd. Yes, you are called to be a shepherd. So say it with me. I'm a shepherd. So today, we read the tail end of chapter 9 and cover a few verses of chapter 10. So here we go. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. It says, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. Right? And he healed every kind of disease and illness. So let me just reiterate this. Maybe you've heard this in the past, that Jesus was an amazing teacher. I mean, he taught, when he taught, he had great audiovisual effects because when he taught, he taught through words and actions. And I'll draw a connection from that later on. Jesus taught through words and actions. Now read, let's read next what Matthew says. In verse 36, he says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Now, let me distinguish here what Jesus felt seeing this crowd and what the Pharisees felt seeing the same crowd. You see, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees saw the, the crowds, they didn't have compassion as what Jesus felt as we, from what we read. Right? They didn't have compassion. They felt two other different emotions. They, felt, they either felt anger or apathy because they believed that this crowd poor or sick people were cursed by God. I mean, to the religious leaders in Jesus' time, the people were not sheep but dogs. They were stray dogs. They were dogs who were dirty, deceased, and dangerous. But that's not how Jesus saw them. In the verse that we read, Jesus had compassion for them. I mean, He felt their pain. He felt their plight. And He loved them. In fact, the original Greek word used for compassion here connotes that his emotion was so deep that it came somehow from the bowels of his being. In other words, Jesus felt deep sorrow for, for the crowd, that his heart was broken for them who were shepherdless. Now, let me just somehow relate this to us. This uh, was this was not any kind of superficial emotion, all right, of pity, like what we have whenever we see the poorest of the poor in the streets of Manila, or whenever we see um, ads that show the malnourished children of Africa, and we say, uy, kawawa naman sila, or we feel deep pity for them, but five seconds later, we're eating ice cream, right? That's not compassion. That's not compassion. You're probably wondering, what then is compassion? Well, compassion is this, and this is what Jesus felt. And maybe this equation will make it clear. Compassion equals passion and action. Compassion is equals or equals passion and action. In other words, real compassion moves you to real action. Now, Jesus identified the problem. When he felt compassion, he identified the problem because they were sheep without a shepherd. So his solution was to raise up shepherds. His solution was to multiply himself being the good shepherd. All right. And the first thing he did was not like, and I want you to listen to this, was not to launch an aggressive recruitment program. All right. And I'll, I'll touch more on this later. But, but, but he was raising up shepherds. All right. And you're, you're a shepherd, I'm a shepherd, and he's raising us up to do that. So the second faith declaration is this. So from I'm a shepherd, now we're going to say, I'm God's co-worker. So I'm God's co-worker. In verse 37, let's continue reading. Jesus said, he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Right? The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Now, frankly, I don't understand why God likes working with us, right? I mean, we're, we're so un, undependable, right? And somehow, let me give you just a quick analogy to somehow illustrate this, or how to, or just give you, let me give you an analogy to illustrate this crazy 
concept of God working with us or choosing to work with us. Imagine Michael Jordan, one of the best basketball players of all time. Michael Jordan on his prime. And he's wanting to be my teammate for a two-on-two game, all right? When in fact, he can easily win the game all on his own. And that's, that's somehow what we're seeing or how we feel or what I feel most of the time when God chooses to use us. So, so why does God bother, all right? Why does God bother including us, fumbling humans, in his grand plans? Think about it. I mean, if I were God, and I thank God I'm not, all right? But if I were God, I won't ask help from anyone, all right? I won't ask anyone to help me. God would probably be, be, God would probably be better off um, doing the harvesting himself. But here's the thing. God insists that we become harvesters. I mean, can you imagine? Without harvesters, there will be no harvesting. That's wild, right? How can, think about this, how can the success of God's plan depend on us? But that's just how God likes to operate His kingdom. Because perhaps in using us, we are transformed to be better, to be stronger and closer to Him than ever. And some call this the great collaboration. I mean, if there's a great commission, God partnering with us, working with us, and through us is the great collaboration. So say this faith declaration. I'm God's co-worker. I'm God's co-worker. The third faith declaration is this. This is God's project. This is God's project. So to get his harvesters, again, Jesus didn't launch a massive marketing campaign with wanted posters and nailing them on uh, telephone posts, nor did he start posting, um, let's say, Facebook ads that said, we are hiring apostles. The first thing he did, he didn't do all of that. The first thing he did was to pray. And the second thing he did was to ask us to pray, right? to ask the apostles to pray. So pray to the Lord, all right, who is in charge. And I think we read this in verse 37. So pray, or sorry, verse 38. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask them to send more workers into his field. Jesus makes it clear that the Father is the Lord of the harvest. So the first step of any harvest is to pray. You know, in this pandemic, there were days when I felt overwhelmed by the problems of our ministry. I mean, since we couldn't um, have the feast in person, many of our attendees and servants and even leaders have became have become disconnected, displaced, maybe even indifferent. All right, to the feast and to the entire community. I, I felt that the community side of the feast was crumbling. But as I felt burdened for our sheep without a shepherd, God somehow cut through my troubled thoughts. And I heard God speak into my heart, saying, Mike, you're not building your organization. I'm building my kingdom. This is not your project. This is mine. This is not your problem. This is mine. Trust me. You know, when I heard that, in my heart, I wish I can say, bam, I relaxed. I mean, and I surrendered to Him. I wish I could say that, but no. (laughs) I still struggled with God for control, striving to reconnect people and build community on my own efforts. But eventually, I was pinned down into submission by His grace. I finally realized that this is His church. This is His ministry. This is God's project and from that there was an ease and a peace moving forward so friends declare this over every area of your life that's causing you stress right now that's causing you to unconsciously scramble for control just declare it with me whatever that is whatever area of that of your life that is causing you that stress that trouble declare it that that is God's project that this is God's project.
Amen. Amen. And before I turn you over to our next preacher to discuss with you the next faith declarations, allow me just to lead you in our giving. And for that, I'd like to reiterate or just remind you what I said earlier about wholeness. We said that self-love alone cannot lead us to wholeness, but rather self-love and loving others through self-sacrifice. And one way, one way, my friends, that this becomes true in our lives is generous giving. It's self-sacrificing, generous giving that we, that we find true joy and fulfillment in this life. But don't take my word for it. I mean, I mean, try it out for yourself. Give generously and sacrificially regularly and receive the peace and the sense of purpose it brings. Amen. Amen. So there are several ways to be able to give generously online. Um, you can do it through credit card, through PayPal or Gcash or um, bank, online bank deposit through, I think, uh, BDO and um, uh, East West Bank. And then I think they'll be flashing it on screen. So give generously, give your best today. And thank you very much. Thank you very much in advance for your generosity to continue this ministry. Now, let's go to the next preacher for the fourth declaration. Hello everybody. Kamusta kayo? Handa na ba kayo sa susunod na faith statement? Bago ko sabihin yan, may tanong ako sa inyo. Ba't pa kayo nagsisimba pag linggo? Yan. Bakit ba? Baka sabihin nyo, eh kasi naman, Brother Jay, syempre gusto namin ma-bless. Diba? Ganyan tayo sa feast eh. Gusto natin ma-bless. Well, that's perfectly alright and many people would like to have that as an answer. But, dear friends, I'd like to say it's an incomplete answer. You know why? Because of this. The purpose of church is not to receive God's blessings, but to be God's blessing to the world. Did you get that? To be God's blessing to the world. Now, let me explain. Why did God invent church in the first place? Bakit nga ba? Bakit ba nagkaroon ng church nung unang-una pa lang? I hope my, my answer will shock you. Are you ready? Kung ready na kayo, type nga ninyo sa chat box. Ready, 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 ready. Okay? It's this. Read it. Church is not a place you go to. It's actually a place you create wherever you go. Wow, Brother Jay, ganyan ba yan? Oo. Noon siguro hindi niyo maintindihan. Pero ngayon siguro sa dami na na pinag-usapan at pinag-aralan. Church is a place, or rather, yes, a place that you create wherever you go. Friends, church is becoming God's love to those people who need Him to the broken, to the wounded, to those who are fractured, all right? To the humanity that's longing for God's love. The purpose of church is not about filling up a building every Sunday. It's actually to be filled up with God, such that you're so filled up with God, it overflows that Sunday, that Monday, all throughout to Saturday. Do you get me? Ready na ba sa fourth faith statement natin? Here is our fourth faith statement. I create church wherever I go. Could you say that? I create church wherever I go. Now, alam ko, sa, sa feast, maraming dadalo dyan, tapos mag, magko-complain, di ba? <laughs> o at least magtatanong, di ba? At sasabihin nila na, ba't ang daming mga parang hindi sila bagay dito sa church na ito. Ang gulo ah, ang dami ko nakikita mga mag boyfriend, mag girlfriend, they're actually, they're actually having premarital sex. Tapos yung may iba, kerida, mga mistress. Tapos kung ano na yung sinasabi ng mga tao, they, they curse. Mga salita nila, hindi pang, pang simbahan. Tapos, grabe, paminsan, we introduce one an- ourselves to one another. Ang sasabihin ng isa, yung kanyang zodiac sign. Don't they know bawal yun sa simbahan? Hindi yun for God. Hindi yun for Jesus. Now, friends, that dialogue, that kind of thinking, I understand. Of course. Alright? You know why we have all of that? Because we've been brainwashed. 
We've been taught and we thought that church was what? A gathering of religious people, of good people, of holy people. But friends, actually, if you look at the gospel, look at the Bible, church is not about gathering, but scattering Jesus followers into the world. It's not about being together as Jesus' followers. No, it's about what going out and sharing Jesus to the world. And so if, if you belong to that group of people who are complaining or you've heard people do that, say that or ask about that, well, I'd just like to say that if you're in the feast, well, you've just joined a community whose sole purpose is to reach the unholy, the religious people, the spiritual loss, the spiritual failures of society, if you may. Everyone that's not so much associated with church, right? Like, for example, the atheists, the agnostics, the what? The free thinkers, the new agers. <laughs> Grabe, di ba? But friends, alam nyo, sa experience ko sa feast, mukhang, yeah, we've succeeded in the feast. Why? These are the people in our feasts. These are the people in our flock. Brothers and sisters, we're not gathering them but we're scattered among them. We Jesus followers are scattered among them. And unfortunately, if you want to hang out with holy people, well, this is not the, the, the community for you. Sad to say, this is not the community for you. So, did you get this? Everybody put your hand on your chest and say this with me. Take a deep breath. I create church wherever I go. I create church wherever I go. Take another deep breath. Whew. And if you're serious with what you just declared in faith, brothers and sisters, then here's my challenge and my invitation. Are you ready? It's this. Friends, create, build your own feast light. Whoa, Brother Jay, what are you talking about? Grabe ka naman. Napagabigat niyan. Ano ba ako? Sino ba ako? Hindi ko kaya yan. O, bago kayo mag-complain, ito na masasabi ko sa inyo. Iba siguro ang pag-intindi nyo sa feast light. Ano ba ang feast light? Napakadali niyan. We're not type, the type to ask you something that would be impossible. No, it's actually quite easy. What you need to do is just pick one or two people. Just pick one or two people. Of course, if you're more, what, masikat ka, yan. Kuha ka ng tatlo, ng lima, kung gusto mo. And you can make a feast light, all right, gathering. You just bring them all in, zoom. Let's use the technology. Zoom lang naman yun eh. Mga tao sa pamilya, o tao sa office ninyo, gather in zoom. And each week, you do church with them. With three steps lang. Three steps ang gagawin nyo. Una, watch the talk portion of the feast online. Yung talk portion lang, hindi yung worship, yung announcement na yun, yung talk portion lang. Second, magkwentuhan lang kayo tungkol dun sa buhay ninyo at saka dun sa talk. Diba? At pagkatapos nun, pray for one another. Dasal lang. Tapos. Done, brothers and sisters. And in that way, guess what? Love that person. Diba? That's church, brothers and sisters. That's church. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? If you got this, please type in the chat box. Got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Friends, we really believe Jesus is really picking people for his mission, for his kingdom, for his heart. And if we go back to the gospel, Jesus started picking his team, right? Let's all read it in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Now, friends, ano ginawa niya? Jesus picked 12 apostles. 12! Now, if you notice, there are also 12 tribes in Israel. So, 12 well, now, bakit nagkaganon? Is that just coincidence? Or was Jesus trying to say something? Well, you bet he was trying to say something. And this is his intention. Jesus was forming the new Israel. Yeah, from the old Israel of the apostle, or rather of the tribes, he's now formed the new Israel with the 12 apostles. Now, in the first place, I don't know, 
Sino ba si Israel? What is Israel? Now, understand this. A little uh, Bible understanding, right? Take a deep breath. Here, understand that since Genesis, God created man out of his image and likeness, yes? And that was trying to say that his presence, his presence, his representatives, all right, would be us, mankind. We were to have dominion over the every living thing, over the earth. Do you get me? And we were all therefore designed to be stewards. We were all designed to be shepherds, right? But what happened? From Genesis 1 up to 11, we found that what? Man messed up big time. We were very selfish. And from Adam up to Noah, we failed again and again and again and again. And so in Genesis 12, Anong Ginawa Ni Lord? God picked up a particular family, and that's the family of Israel, so that that family will represent him on earth. But again, from Genesis 12 up to the last chapter of Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament, we find that what? Man or Israel failed again. Israel messed up also. From Abraham, Jacob, uh, the judges, okay? Abraham, Israel, Jacob, the judges, okay? And all the rest of the people, the kings, the, the, the priests, they all failed God. And since they did a bad job of representing God here on earth, guess what? Suddenly, Jesus enters history. And now to establish the new Israel. And the new Israel was using these people he just chose. Quite a wild choice for Jesus. Let's all read it from Matthew chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. Here are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, Peter's brother. James, son of Zebedee. John, James's brother. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas. Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus. Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot. Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. <laughs> now, friends, understand this. Today, when you are going to set up an organization, a movement, or whatever, it all depends on the founding members, right? The board of directors, if you may. And if if you want a strong company, what will you do? No? Maka-hire ka ng mga sikat, mga bigatin ng mga board of directors, di ba? Mga kilala, respectable people, business people, mga movers and shakers ng society, di ba? Yun ang kukunin mo para ayos ang lakas ng kumpanya mo. But friends, believe you me, Jesus did not do that. He did not do that at all. Why? Because there was no prestige in the people he picked as apostles. Would you understand that? Um... There were no princes, no priests, no politicians, no professors even among these people. Kundi din yung nga, my God, mga, wala namang edukasyon nito mga taong to. Totoo. Alright? We all started with these four fishy fishermen. Alright? Okay? They were, what? They were there. And shockingly, the most educated person was what? Who? Matthew. But we know Matthew was what? The tax collector. And he was the most repugnant, as they say. Sabi ng mga Pharisees tungkol sa kanya, they are, he is the scum of the earth. Diba? Tapos of course, nandiyan si Judas. Na siguro, isipin yung patamang kasi niya, kinuha si Judas. Diba? So, kung titingan natin, yung recruitment style ni, ni Jesus, eh, pwede natin sabihin na ganito, Jesus was a bad picker. Yeah? You think so? Alright? Kailangan niya mag-seminar no, ng how to recruit. <laughs> parang, parang ganun, di ba? But friends, if you look at it, di ba, parang ang score ni Jesus sa, sa recruitment, ganito. Um, 11 is to 1. Ano yun? 11 good guys versus 1 bad guy. Right? Wrong. No, no, no. I don't believe that's true. Why? Because the real score is 1 versus 11. 1 versus 11. And you might be saying, Ikaw naman, Brother Jay, dito mo kami, binaliktad mo lang eh. <laughs> hindi, hindi, ito ang ibig sabihin. 1 good guy as against 11 bad guys. Diba? 1 good guy against 11 bad guys. Bakit? Hindi naman nakalimutan? What happened when Jesus got arrested? Right? All of the apostles, except for one person, 
abandon Jesus. They were all traitors. It was only John the Beloved who stayed with him, beside him, when he was crucified. Yes, remember? And everyone abandoned him, including Peter, especially Peter, abandoning his master. Kaya yun, only one out of 12 people were faithful. Grabe. But here's the truth, brothers and sisters. Are you ready? Jesus was a bad picker, but a great forgiver. Yeah? He was a great forgiver. And I don't know about you, but that's what I need him to be. What I need him to be. And I believe this messed up world needs him to be that as well. How about you, my friend? Would you need him to be a great forgiver too? Wouldn't you? Brothers and sisters, be further blessed with Brother Arun God. My prayer is that you are receiving fully the message of God specifically for you. Kinakausap ka ni Lord, personal. Sana nakikinig ka at naririnig mo siya. May question ako sa inyo. Type nyo lang yung sagot nyo ha, sa comment. Lahat, basta huwag kayo mahiya, i-type nyo. Pag nanonood ka sa TV, mahirap nga lang, no? But this is my question. Kung makakatanggap ka ng magandang text message or message ngayon, no? Ano yung gusto mong matanggap? Sa cellphone mo. May natanggap kang mensahe. Ano ang gusto mong matanggap? Yan. Sige nga, i-type nyo nga. Ano ang gusto mong matanggap? Sige lang, kamahiya. Kahit ano yan. Ito yung gusto ko. Ganyan. No? Go type it. Why? Why are we talking about it? This is the fifth faith declaration. The message lives in me. Ang kwento ni Jesus, ito na. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles. Yun. Pinadala na niya. Alam niyo ba sa Greek, ang apostles, ang ibig, ang salita ay apostolai, ang ibig sabihin, to be sent, pinadala. These 12 guys were messengers. And just to let you know, we are all God's messengers. Hindi mo lang yan, yan mga tinatayot niyo, hindi niyo lang gusto matanggap yan. Gusto niyo rin sanang ipadala yan sa iba. But what is unique about God's messengers is that we cannot just be male men. Hindi tayo pwedeng nagdadala lang ng balita. Hindi tayo pwedeng bitbit lang natin yung salita. Saan? Sa bag. Why? Because Jesus is the message. Jesus is the message. The message must live inside the messenger. Kaya tayo, dala natin ang ano, ang magandang balita sa atin. We carry in us the joy and hope of the message. And who is the message? Jesus. Kaya, I want you to declare, the message lives in me. Declare that. The message lives in me. Type nyo dyan, the message lives in me. And because the message lives in you, God can perform miracles through you. Ito yung pang-anim na faith declaration. God will perform miracles through me. You know, in the next verse, Jesus told the apostles where to go and what to do. Kaya yung una, dito kayo pupunta. Saan? Jesus sent out the 12 apostles with these instructions. Do not go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, half Jew, half Gentile. Don't go there, but only to the people of Israel. God's lost sheep. Pag nabasa mo parang, Lord, napaka-exclusive naman. No, this is not a matter of prejudice, but progression. It is a timing issue and a strategy issue. Timing, hindi pa ngayon. Strategy, hindi pwedeng kumalat, hindi mangyayari. God knows that the apostles might be overwhelmed if they were sent immediately to the Gentiles and they were not ready yet. Kaya ang instruction siya, wag muna. Dito muna. Dito lang. Practice. Parang ganon. In the same way, my dear friends, God is not sending you to the entire world. Not yet. 
He is sending you now to a specific person or to a small group of people. Sino sila? It could be your office mates, your classmates, your FB group mates, your messenger group mates, or your K-drama mates. No? So I want you to look for one, two, three, five, or six people or more. You can build a feast light with. Yun. Hanap ka. Sino kayang pwedeng manood nitong feast at home na to na magkakasama kami kahit online? Tapos you process them. If you are interested, you have to let us know. And we will guide you to opening a feast light. Second, Jesus told them what to do. Where? And then second, what? Ito ang gagawin nyo. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Grabe, oh. Announce to them and then do this. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Wow. Cure those with leprosy. And cast out demons. Ay, grabe. Yun ang utos sa kanila. Takatakot. But may I shock you please? Pwede ba? Gulating kita. Kahit hawak mo yung phone mo, sabi mo, ha, ha, tas nahulog yung phone mo. Gugulatin kita. You are called to do the same. Pareho lang. Yun din. Messenger ka ni Lord. Hindi yan inutos lang dun sa mga apostol. Ikaw din. I want you to look around you, my dear friends. So many people are sick in their hearts. And it is causing their bodies to be sick as well. Jesus wants you to heal them. So many are dead internally. So many live lives like zombies. And Jesus wants you to raise them up to new life. So many have leprosy, not literally, but figuratively because they reject themselves. Di nila mahal sarili nila. And Jesus wants you to embrace them and welcome them back into the family. So many are trapped in evil. And Jesus wants you to liberate them from their slavery, from their sin. Jesus wants you remember that. And let me close with the last declaration. God's love flows through me. God's love flows through you. I want you to type that again. Say it out loud and type it. God's love flows through me. Go, go, type nyo. As you type it, you declare it. Sinasabi mo sa Espiritu mo, God's love flows through me. Sige Lord, padaluin mo ang pag-ibig mo sa akin. Yeah, type it, type it, type it. Pero pwede mong sabihin habang tinatype mo, God's love flows through me. Pero talaga, para, ba't, ba't sugatan ako? But walang nagmamahal sa akin. Di ba? Pwedeng sabihin mo, ang dami kong bitbit na problema. Kaya, bakit ko, papa, ba, di ba ako, bakit ko share ito? Ang dami. You might be saying, I've got problems of, of my own. I don't have time. I don't have energy to think of others. O, tingnan nyo ito. Tingnan mo tong exam na ito. Tingnan mo tong bata, ano? Nakita mo na umiyak si Danica sa hallway. Nalaman mo na si Danica ay broken hearted. Ano ang iyong gagawin? Tingnan mo ang sagot niya. Wala akong paki kay Danica. <laughs> Di ba pwede ganyan? Di parang, ha? Sugatan din ako eh. Anong pakailan ko sa kanila? I don't care. O kaya, pag uh, ito yung gusto mong ilagay dyan sa labas ng bahay niyo. Thank you for leaving. Okay, babalik. Dami ko ng problema, ha? O kayo mga tao mingi ng, pro- ng tulong sa akin. Thank you for leaving. Buti um- Pwedeng ganun, eh. Bakit ang bigat ng puso mo, eh? You feel you have nothing to offer. No matter how much you try, you cannot love because you're empty and you are right. You're right. On your own, you really cannot do that. That is why you need to let God love through you. Daluyan ka ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Gusto ko tandaan nyo, noon, after the resurrection of Jesus, itong mga apostles niya, alam nyo, nung nabuhay na muli yung bida nila, 
yung boss nila, yung Panginoon nila na si Jesus. Alam nyo nangyari sa kanila mga apostles? Wow! Takot pa rin sila. Takot pa rin. They were frozen in fear and they were hiding in the upper room. Kaya nung nawala na si Lord, ascended to heaven, lalo silang nagtago. But one day, the Holy Spirit fell on them and they became apostles 2.0. Mga takot na parang mga batang takot. Nako, biglang naging brave band of brothers, naging matapang, who were willing to die for Jesus. They were traitors and then they became martyrs. Grabe. Talagang ganun, biglang nagbago. My dear friends, Jesus is still forming His Avengers team and He is recruiting you into His team. Sa halika, sabi ni Lord. Pero pwede mo sabihin, Lord, unworthy ako. Dami kong kasalanan. Pwede mo sabihin, Lord, hindi ako ready. Wala, I'm, I'm so not equipped. Or you can say, Lord, I'm so scared. I am terrified. Then, you are perfect for the mission. Then you are qualified. Tandaan nyo, the apostles felt the same. They were unworthy. They left the Lord to die. They were not equipped. They were fishermen, ordinary people. They were terrified. But they were qualified. But this is what you do. Just let God love you and let God love through you. It's all you need to do. Lord, mahalin niyo ako at gawin niyong daluyan ang aking buhay ng pag-ibig niyo para sa iba. My dear friends, God's love flows through you. Let's come to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong salita. Pinatitibay mo ang aking loob kahit daming problema, kahit hindi ako bagay sa tinatawag mo. Tinatawag mo pa rin ako. Lord, my life is in a mess. But you want to bring out a great message from my messy life. And so I say yes. I say yes to you. My dear friends, allow the love of God to flow through you. How? Let Him love you now. Let the Lord embrace you right now. Whatever situation you're in, even if you're afraid, even if you feel like you're dirty, even if you're lost, even if you're in pain, allow Jesus to embrace you now. Let Him fill you with love to overflowing. Let Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I receive your love, O God, right now. Let your love flow through me today. Let's continue to worship Him, my dear friends. God is here. God is with me. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you for speaking to us, your people. Brothers and sisters, I invite you all to think about what's been weighing you down. What is that burden you're carrying? I want you to look at it and shift your focus from that burden to Him. Shift the control from you to Him, and you will be surprised what amazing things God can do for your life. Brothers and sisters, I invite you all to extend your arms in worship and surrender. Let your praise today be your declaration. I'm praised in surrender Not for defeat but victory Ooh. For this battle has been won now We leave no room for the enemy Oh Our faith in surrender Not for defeat but victory But victory For this battle has been won now We leave no Fight with 
snakes and stones Odds are against us but one day no more We were lions, we were rescued then we made it much for joining us this week at Feast at Home. We hope you have many takeaways that can inspire you throughout the week. If this is your first time joining us, we would like to invite you for a quick chat right after this session in our Feast at Home welcome party. So our team will comment down below the Zoom link for that and we hope you can join us. Until then, brothers and sisters, stay safe and we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain, longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain I choose to heed your call I leave it up to you You who see my rise and fall So cleanse me, disturb me Shake me to my core Make me 